If you've ever played an online video game, you've probably experienced uh, this stuff. Lag. For one reason or another, your internet is having a hard time telling the game what's going on. This is a tale as old as time, and it's quite the unfixable problem for the video game industry. But have you ever sat down and wondered why this is the case? With all the technology we have in the modern world, we're still at the point where nobody has come up with a solution to lag yet. Well, let me tell you, it's not for lack of trying. People have been trying for decades to come up with clever solutions to make your gaming experience as fast and as fluid as possible. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about lag and how devs try to fix it. When you play a single player game and you press W to move forward, your character will instantly move forward. The signal is sent from your keyboard directly to the game and your character moves, and it's as simple as that. But when you play an online game and you press W, quite a lot is going on behind the scenes. There's a computer that is hosting your match called a server, and every single player in the match is connected to this server. When you press W, your PC sends that command to the server and the server receives it. But unfortunately for our developers, the internet, as fast as it is, is not instantaneous. All sorts of signals, from button inputs to hit detection, take time to get sent from your computer to the server and back again. For things like player movement, the time it takes your internet to send the signal to the server will gate how smooth your gameplay experience is. For things like hit detection and other players' positions, the speed at which your internet can receive signals from the server is the bottleneck instead. So I press W and I start walking forward, but that signal taking time to reach the server means that what I can see on my screen is different from what the server sees. And for a clean online experience, you'd ideally want everyone to be seeing the exact same thing. So how how does the game rectify this? Well, there's multiple ways to do this. The worst way to do this is the thing that certain old FPS games used to do. It's called client-side hit detection. Basically, each user's own PC was in charge of telling the server what was happening. Instead of having it so that the server makes sure every player's actions match up to what the server sees, the game would just let the user's client tell the server whether their attacks were hitting their targets or not. So that even if the server's hitboxes were mismatched slightly from the user's client, the player's client would still make sure that any attack that hit from the user's perspective would also hit from the server's perspective. But this allowed for some very obnoxious cheat softwares to just trick the game into thinking every single attack was hitting every single player all the time. Now there are some modern games that use client-side hit detection, and they have complex ways to prevent cheaters, and they make sure to run the hit detection by the server before allowing a hit to be confirmed. And this can work well, making it never feel like the player's shots are missing when they should be hitting. But the old school version of client-side hit detection was very exploitable. But there's plenty of other ways to handle online netcode. The most simple way to write netcode, which some games still use to this day, is to delay the user's actions so that they align with what the server sees. So if there's 10 milliseconds of ping and you press W, the game will wait 10 milliseconds before moving your character on your screen, just to make sure that what you see lines up perfectly with what the server sees. This is what we call delay-based netcode, but it's not flawless. The biggest issue being that faster-paced games become basically unplayable playable with just moderate amounts of ping. Let's say you have 50 ping and you're playing Smash Ultimate. Steve's minecart has 18 frames of startup, which at 60 FPS is about 288 milliseconds. With 50 milliseconds of ping, you've got just 238 milliseconds to react to this move. And since the average person's reaction speed is between 150 to 300 milliseconds, this minecart goes from being a fairly reactable move to being pretty difficult to react to. It doesn't become impossible to react to, but it becomes significantly more difficult. And people are already making arguments to ban Steve in offline tournaments. So in online play and online tournaments, the character becomes even stronger. So this means that instead of being able to react to the move when you see the animation, you're instead constantly trying to predict when your opponent is going to throw out the move, which not only drastically changes the way the game's played, but it also massively impacts the game's balance online versus offline. The other issue with delay-based netcode is that it becomes exponentially worse with higher ping. The higher the ping goes, the worse the game feels to play. You only need 40 to 50 milliseconds of ping for this delay to be very noticeable and very annoying. And the higher it goes, the worse it gets. At 
100 ping and upwards, the game becomes barely playable, with every single button press feeling almost detached from what's actually happening on your screen. Not to mention that when your ping is inconsistent, even low ping can feel terrible. Having a stable 40 ping is fine, but fluctuating from 20 to 30 and back again at random feels completely unplayable. Delay-based netcode can also cause some game freezes in high lag situations. In a system that uses delay-based netcode, the server won't accept not receiving any commands from one player. So the game will freeze until an input is received and the server can move forward. This is what causes this sort of stuff to happen. The game server is waiting to receive a command from the laggy player, but that laggy player's connection is struggling to send any commands to the server at all, so the game periodically freezes until that command is received. Delay-based netcode is pretty simple, and it can work for certain types of games, but generally speaking, it's pretty bad. It causes way too many gameplay issues that are a huge turn-off for players nowadays. But what if there was another way? What if the internet truly was instantaneous, and there was zero ping for online games? What if there was a way to rise above this disgusting mortal plane, and ascend to a higher place, where I can play online with other players, and still have my actions be processed entirely on my own client instantly? with no cheaters as a byproduct of this? A world with zero ping, and online connectivity? Well, let me tell you, it's all possible. We live in such a world. The future is now. Well, just so long as your game doesn't actually have any direct interactions with other players. Sorry, if I did I hype you up for nothing? Well, yeah, no, you won't be playing Smash with zero ping anytime soon. Sorry about that. But it is possible in some games. Like Trackmania, for example. It has multiplayer functionality that allows other players to all race on the same track all at once and compete for the fastest times. And despite there being other players on your screen, you still have zero ping. All of your actions happen instantaneously as if you were playing offline. The the reason they get to do this is because you can't interact with other players. There's no crashing into them or anything. Driving into another player makes you go straight through each other. So if that player's position is slightly different on their client versus where the server thinks it is, that doesn't matter at all. Gameplay on my end isn't negatively impacted by that other player's position being slightly misrepresented. It doesn't affect the experience of any other player. So the game can just allow his position to be inaccurate, because it doesn't matter. Momentum Mod is another game that does this. The game is like a hub for all source engine movement mechanics, where everything from surf to b hop to rocket jumping to accelerated backwards hopping all show up. And it too is basically a racing game, where you're competing with other players for better times on maps. And the game has multiplayer functionality that works basically the same way as Trackmania. The most I can actually interact with another player outside of typing in chat is jumping up and down in front of them. So we get to both have zero ping for the exact same reason because the accuracy of this guy's player model and hitboxes relative to the server has no relevance to me whatsoever. But unfortunately, if other players have to be able to physically interact with each other in a meaningful and accurate way, then we can't have such a wonderful lagless world. We have to descend back down into the disgusting world that we just climbed out of, back into the sick and twisted reality we live in, with bad hit registration and game freezes. Never destined to reach perfection, always longing for what could have been. Sorry, I got, I got a little bit carried away. Sorry, I'll stop. So if we can't have perfection, what's the next best thing? The next best thing is a little thing we like to call rollback netcode. And rollback netcode is a bit more complicated than delay based. When I press jump, I begin moving instantly on my screen, with no delay whatsoever, just like it was offline. My signal then takes a little bit of time to get to the server. But instead of the server showing the move after a small delay, it instead removes the first few frames of my jump animation to make the move sync up. So if I have 32 milliseconds of ping and I press my jump button, that signal takes 32 milliseconds to reach my opponent and my opponent's screen will then remove the first 32 milliseconds of my jump animation to make our experiences sync up with the server. At 32 milliseconds, it is removing just two frames of my jump animation, which as you can imagine, is completely unnoticeable at full speed. This makes for a much smoother online experience for most people, and this is how most games handle their netcode nowadays. Even fighting games are getting in on the rollback netcode train. Rollback netcode makes low ping feel like playing offline, and makes high ping situations feel like low ping situations on delay based netcode. And its wide adoption is making online gaming far better than it's ever been before. Rollback netcode is generally 
generally the best form of netcode. But some older games still have delay-based netcode, and it still feels relatively good to play with regardless. Because there are lots of clever ways to mask delay-based netcode to make it feel much better than it would do otherwise. Like take a look at Team Fortress 2 for example. When I press W, my character begins moving instantaneously, regardless of my ping. If I shoot my shotgun, the animation occurs the moment I press the fire button, and the bullets hit the wall instantaneously too. But when I fire my shotgun at a player, the animations all play instantly just like normal. But I still have to wait for the server to realise that I dealt damage to an enemy player. Same when I fire a projectile like a rocket. I left click and the animation plays instantly, but it takes a period of time before the rocket leaves my weapon. Simply put, any player actions that have no need to interact with the server at all are handled by my client on my machine. Anything that needs to interact with the server, like damaging other players or firing projectiles that other players can see and interact with, or capturing the objective, they need to use that classic delay-based netcode to make the server align with my client. This creates a system where there's definitely a noticeable difference between low and high ping, but at least all the basic stuff like animations and movement are still handled client-side, so there's at least a base level of fluidity to playing on high ping, even if shooting projectiles makes you feel like you're drunk. So for most multiplayer games, there's just no way to avoid some form of latency, short of having your opponent literally sit next to you and play on the same device as you. And every player dreams of pingless multiplayer games. But this is the real world, the wonderful world of netcode. A world where game devs are constantly wrestling with the speed of the internet to try and get to a point where your online gaming experiences are as good as possible. Or at least some game devs are trying to make it as good as possible anyway. Not all of them really care, but that's a story for a different video. Thanks for watching.